The question here today is what happens when you screen over 10,000 polymerases? Mike, I really enjoyed your talk today about HiQ and the other advances. Can you share with us some of the highlights? Yeah, absolutely, Dale. I think what's exciting uh, is the improvements that we have with HiQ have, uh, have really made a difference in accuracy. And, and the best way that we wanted to measure that is really by measuring um, a, a truth sample, right? The sample that we know a lot about. So what, what we're able to do is take this genome in a bottle sample, something that's very well documented, uh, that's great for large data sets or, or really large genomes or exomes. But when it gets small, it gets tougher. So what we wanted to do is find a, a, a better sample that had truth peppered uh, over that smaller segment. So we looked at this Acrometrics uh, Oncology Hotspot Control, which has over 500 cosmic mutations very tightly layered uh, in, in uh, say, about the, the top 50 cancer genes. And, and you're, those are synthesized, actually, in, uh, in vitro, and then you can spike them in at known concentrations. So what we start with is, is kind of broad truth, right? And that's great. When you, when you have broad truth, you can really start to understand which, which technology, which sequencing technology can, can, can give you that truth best. So you have a priori known mutations rather than having to mix through a whole bunch of different cell lines. Yes, yes, exactly. And, and the, the problem with the single cell line would be, you know, for that small region, you'd only have, you know, a, a, you know, a dozen or so variants. But here we have 500 different variants that we can look at. And so we can ask the question that's on everyone's mind. How good is this high Q enzyme? And more importantly, how is it relative to Illumina's MySeq technology? So we ran the experiment. We looked at uh, basically our Ampliseq cancer hotspot panel uh, and then our HiQ coupled with, uh, with the PGM sequencer and we compared that to Illumina's TrueSeq uh, oncology hotspot panel with uh, the MySeq technology. So if I understand correctly, the acrometric control could be used for both platforms? Absolutely, it was engineered, it is engineered simply for the kind of the top most popular 500 uh, cosmic mutations, SNPs and indels as well as complex mutations as well. And then what you find? So what we found uh, was that raw read accuracy on the platforms are very comparable. Actually, our, our raw read accuracy is slightly uh, higher, meaning the, the errors are lower on the PGM with the new high Q enzyme relative to the MySeq. But what was more informative, Dale, is when we started to look across read depth, when we start actually making questions about what variants are called and are they called correctly. And what we found is that our sensitivity and positive predictive value are actually higher uh, than Illumina's MySeq uh, with the PGM run on this ca cancer hotspot panel. If I understand correctly then, as far as positive predictive value, it's a combination of sensitivity and specificity. Uh, is, uh, PPV is really getting the answer right, both getting the negatives correct as the positives correct, I as see. opposed to just specificity. But it, the, the combination of both is really about, did I find the variants that are different, and then did I get the right answer to when I got them there? Because it's about a false call that you want to avoid. And then you also had some data from E. coli regarding reduction in the errors? So, so there's two ways that we, lots of ways that we can measure is the polymerase accurate here. One is this uh, kind of oncology hotspot control. We also just asked the question, uh, does HiQ an as an enzyme, does that actually result in kind of lower indel rates? And so we looked at de novo, uh, de novo assembly metrics and what we saw is uh, uh, relative to our 200 base pair kits, we're seeing uh, decent reductions, 90% uh, in some cases of re reduced indel errors, um, which really means that people are gonna be able to put uh, bacterial genomes together with fewer misassemblies and fewer errors. So how is the early access uh, folks response to the HiQ enzyme? Uh, early access was great, but actually the, the, the beauty of it is it's out of early access and it's commercially available right now. So. Um, you know, what's nice about the experiment going back to the oncology hotspot is it's all available, right? So the, 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 the control is available, HiQ is available, obviously the PGM sequencer is available, but everyone can run this experiment on their own. We just ran it with a, a quick uh, 10, 10, 10 runs to try to take a look at it, uh, but it's there for everyone. And if I remember correctly, you had a slide on AmpliSeq exome using HiQ. Or was I mistaken? Yes, no, so AmpliSeq Exome is really uh, a forward-looking product, right? So we've taken this AmpliSeq uh, enzyme, we put it on the personal genome machine, 
and then we're going to put it uh, towards the end of this year, early next year, on uh, on the proton sequencer. But our improvements are not on on. P1 are not just limited to our enzyme. We've got new wash conditions, we actually have a new chip, there's new beads, all kinds of things across the oh, board to, to result in kind of higher signal, better accuracy, and fewer false positives. And everyone likes fewer false positives because it fundamentally means uh, fewer wrong variants to screen through, right? And everyone likes to, uh, to get to the right answer faster. Michael, thank you a lot for a great talk. I think it was really well received. Absolutely, Dale. It's always nice to understand uh, truth and then you know, use sequencing platforms to understand how close we can get to that truth. Super. Thanks.